Hey everyone, welcome back to the another video of Engineers Academy. And in this video, we are going to talk about the different types of fluid flows. So over here, in our previous video, we have seen the different types of fluids. And now, in this video, we are going to cover the different types of fluid flows. This particular types of the fluids deals with the fluid statics. Over here, these different types of fluid flows, which will which deals with the fluid dynamics basically. And this fluid flow is nothing but the there are the fluid is not stationary it is there in motion so guys please watch my video till the end so you'll get a better understanding what are the different types of fluid flows and why do we need to learn those fluid flows in order to understand the different derivation in order to understand the different formulas pascal's law continuity equations so all these are depends upon this particular different types of fluid flows so guys without wasting any time let's begin with our today's topic so guys Please do subscribe to my educational channel Ingenious Academy and guys please hit the bell icon so whenever I upload a new video you will get an instant notification. So guys let's begin with our today's videos that is different types of fluid flows. Whenever a fluid is there in motion it has a certain characteristics it has a certain attributes which is nothing but the fluid will have a certain amount of the volume a fluid will have a certain amount of density or pressure and uh, you know the direction of the flow so all these matters and there are uh, like the uh, due to these attributes due to this like the characteristics of the uh, flowing fluid there are different types it has a different types so that these different types are categorized in a such a way that a particular fluid in motion which can be categorized as the first one which is nothing but the steady flow or as unsteady flow the second one is the uniform non-uniform flow the third one is the laminar and the turbulent flow fourth one is compressible in incompressible flow and the fifth uh, fifth one is nothing but the rotational flow irrotational flow and the last one is one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional fluid flow so guys, uh, we'll check out all this flow one by one. So the first one is the steady and unsteady flow. In case of the steady flow, you know, a particular fluid is having a characteristics like it has having a certain pressure, having a certain volume, a certain uh, velocity, certain density. So all this, you know, this uh, physical characteristics are remains constant with respect to time in a fluid flow at a given point, basically. So over here, so I'm taking an example, a flow through a pipe which is having a pressure, uh, having a density and having a velocity. So that is the flow through the pipe and the pipe is having a, uh, like uh, the same cross-sectional area from inlet to your outlet. So there will be the no change in the pressure, no change in the velocity and no change in the density over a specific time period. So that's why this particular flow can be termed as a steady flow. In case of unsteady flow, all these like physical parameters, all these physical attributes, these are changes with respect to time. So, so the flow is termed as unsteady flow. So moving ahead next is nothing but the uniform and non-uniform flow. In case of uniform flow, the your particular flowing fluid is have a certain amount of the velocity. This particular velocity, if it is constant over the time, then it is termed as a uniform flow. If that particular velocity changes with respect to time, then that particular flow is termed as non-uniform flow. So over here, let me give you another example. In our previous example, the flow uh, through a pipe was having the same cross-sectional area from your inlet to outlet. Suppose I'm having a pipe, but over here, this cross-sectional area varies. That means your pipe is there having a tapered uh, tapered uh, cross section so when a fluid flows through that particular pipe then the pressure at the inlet is not equal to the pressure at the outlet or we can consider as the velocity at inlet is not equal to the velocity at outlet so the flow becomes non-uniform over here in this case so uniform flow is the flow which only deals with your velocity of the flowing fluid if the velocity is constant over the time period, then that particular flow is uniform flow. If the velocity is not constant over the time period, then the flow becomes non-uniform. So guys, moving ahead next is nothing but the your laminar flow and the turbulent flow. In case of the laminar flow, a particular flow is having uh, like the all the particles. 
in the flowing fluid moves in a straight line it flows a sing straight path which do not cross over another which which are the this particular flow is of the uh, is having a particular layers the flow is there in layers and this particular layers do not interchange or do not overlap over the another so in that case that particular fluid flow is termed as you know lamina flow so at the first first example the flow through a pipe having a cross section like a same cross section throughout the inlet and the outlet is termed as you know we can term that particular flow is lamina flow moving ahead next is nothing but the turbulent flow so lamina flow is the same layer the fluid particles flows into a same layer but in case of turbulent flow this fluid particles overlaps over the another so as to form so as to occur the turbulence in the flowing flow so that's why it is termed as a turbulent flow so in case of turbulent flow uh, the particular like the fluid particles you know they form a vortices or else they crosses their boundaries this is the irregular type of the fluid flow so that's why it is termed as a turbulent flow so moving ahead next is nothing but the compressible and incompressible flow in case of compressible flow as the name itself says that compressible so that particular flow type can be compressed it means your density over here plays a very important role the density of the flowing fluid or the density of the your fluid particles it can be you know it can be altered the density is not constant over the time period it means that particular flow becomes compressible flow in that case so over here we had to understand that this particular density plays a very important role in the compressibility of the flow of your fluid flow in case of uh, incompressible fluid the density do not change with respect to time most of the fluids are you know uh, most of the fluids or else we can call it as all the fluids are a perfect incompressible in nature so in the pascal's law we have seen this part like pascal's law a perfect perfectly incompressible fluid is used so that is the that is the you know this particular point is there that is the compressibility and non incompressibility so compressibility is related to the flow of the gases through the duct you know the gases can be compressed over here but the fluids can't the fluids cannot be compressed it is the fluid is perfectly incompressible uh, or or else we can call it as a liquid is perfectly incompressible fluid basically so moving ahead next is the rotational and irrotational flow so in a fluid flow there are the some particles uh, there are the particles which flows in a direction having a certain velocity v and uh, while flowing they also rotates about their own axis so in that case this particular fluid flow is termed as the rotational type of the fluid flow and if the fluid flow is like a continuous flow there is no rotation about their own axis and in that case the fluid flow is termed as the irrotational fluid flow so guys basically this type of the fluid flow we can see in the like a uh, discharge measuring instrument such as in the rotameters we can see like the, there is like the when a fluid enters uh, from the bottom of the rotameter from the inlet of the rotameter it will like it enters and it then starts rotating the all the like the fluid uh, starts rotating about their own axis so that is the simple example of your the rotational flow so moving ahead next is uh, nothing but the your one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional fluid flow so over here we have to understand that a particular velocity a particular flowing fluid has a certain amount of velocity and the velocity is a function of the time if the velocity is the function of the time for a one direction only for a single direction only then that that particular fluid flow is termed as you know the one directional fluid flow and if the velocity is the function of time for two different space coordinates then that particular fluid flow is termed as two dimensional fluid flow if the velocity which is a function of time for three mutually perpendicular axes then that particular fluid flow can be termed as three dimensional flow so now let me give you an example of this one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional fluid flows so in one dimensional fluid flow you remember the example i have given at the beginning of this video which is nothing but the having a pipe which is having a same cross sectional area and the fluid flowing is through that pipe having a steady condition having a uniform uh, flow type so that is termed as so that is that particular fluid flow is termed as a 
one dire uh, one directional fluid flow all this fluid particles are moving in a straight line over here in this case and uh, this is and so the straight line can be considered as the motion that is the uh, motion over the x axis so that particular fluid flow is nothing but the single dimensional fluid flow and in the later example i have given the pipe is having a varying cross sectional area uh, in a tapered pipe the fluid flows in a straight line also and uh, along with the you know the tapered boundaries also so there if we analyze particular that the flow it will go in a straight line which is related to the center line of the pipe and there will be the another direction that is uh, that is you know that is related to the your wall wall of the pipe or else the boundary uh, boundary of your uh, cross section varying cross section a flow which is uh, through the boundary so that is nothing but the over here there is the x parameter and in the opposite direction in the upper side that will be the y direction so there are these two different direction which occurs over here in this case so this particular fluid tank is considered as a two dimensional fluid flow and in the three dimensional fluid flow you know this fluid particles goes into an irregular path it goes into a straight line it goes into the different boundaries it goes into the it, it goes into the you know all the three directionals that is x y and z so that's why it is termed as a three dimensional fluid so this particular most of the three dimensional fluid occurs in a, uh, in case of you know gases mostly in the air so when a car is there in motion and uh, is having a drag of air you know the overcoming air when the car goes in a motion it is having a certain air drag so if we analyze that particular into the uh, the motion of the particles of the air so that will be the flow of the air into three dimensional so this is nothing but the three dimensional flow so guys i hope you understood these different types of fluid flows in fluid dynamics so guys thank you for watching my video please do subscribe to my education channel engineers academy